Um, how many of you are happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. God is head over heels in love with you. Um, there's no question about how Father God feels towards you. Amen. Amen. Say with me now. now. See, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you think you're struggling with. It doesn't matter what your situation looks like. God right now is for you. Amen. God right now is, is, is head over heels in love with you. Amen. Amen. Head Amen. over heels in love with you. Amen. So um, we're doing something different tonight. and um, I'm excited. It's, it's good to do things different. I think it keeps us on our toes. Don't you agree? It, it's easy to, to get into what a lot of people say, oh, it's a tradition. Watch out now. Say it with me. Watch out now. Watch out. Amen. Because tradition easily becomes religion. Right? And the way religion works is, guess what? There's no heart behind it. It's just a matter of, well, this is just what we do. Why do you do it? I don't know. We've just always done this. Listen, family, I'm telling you the truth. I mean, I ministered to somebody t earlier today, and, and, and they said, well, you know, I pray that my child can go over to God's hand. And I said, well, why don't your child go to where you go to worship? And then this is what this parent said to me. My church wouldn't accept him. And then I said, well, why are you there worshiping if you don't accept every soul? Am I wrong? I mean, am I wrong to, 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 to believe that truly this place is for every soul? Can I get an amen? Wait, okay. Wait, 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 wait. wait. All right, let's ask it even gooder. Let's ask it even gooder. Did Lord Jesus Christ only die for the ones that got it together? Because uh, I'm going to tell you right now that that, that ain't for me, man. Because I was straight up a wreck, beloved Joellen. I was straight up a wreck. And all I had to do was call on his glorious name and he saved me. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you right now, rebuke tradition. Rebuke tradition. Rebuke religion. If you're, if you're, hear my heart, because some of y'all need to hear this and some of y'all ain't ready to hear it. But guess what? I'm going to plant the seed anyway. Some of y'all need to wake up because some of you guys want to get comfortable. And guess what? You think Lord Jesus was comfortable on that cross? So I challenge you, get uncomfortable in your faith. Amen. Amen. I'm get get uncomfortable. Don't 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 be one of these people going, oh yeah, well, okay, Lord, I hear you. You want me to pray for the cashier, but I'll I'll pray for him in the car. What? But guess what? Some people are okay with that. I'm here to tell you that ain't okay. God has asked you to go pray for them. That means go pray for them. Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, well, you just don't understand. That just makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how I feel. right? It doesn't matter how my day went today. It doesn't matter what happened today. It doesn't matter as far as what's trying to come against me. It doesn't matter as far as how many people are talking about me. It doesn't matter that some of my church family here are just crunchy looking at me sideways. It doesn't, none of it matters. Because all that matters is Jesus Christ is Lord and our God loves us. Can I get a hallelujah? Say with me, fight. Fight. Don't you agree? That you have to come to terms to learn how to fight spiritual warfare. Amen. And Holy Spirit, you can't make this up. Holy Spirit just completely opened this door right now for what I'm about to introduce you to. You see, some of you wasn't aware of what's going to take place tonight, and it's on purpose. This wasn't meant to be advertised or, or made, made known on a Sunday morning because Holy Spirit said this is how he wanted to introduce this. And what many of y'all don't know is that we are in constant battle, in constant war, even as you sleep. Even as you sleep. There is a war taking place right now that if you put your spiritual eyes on, you would even check yourself. It would stop being, well, well, woe is me. I just don't feel good right now. I just don't want to do this. You wouldn't be like that no more. Because you truly know the spiritual realm. The people who don't know the spiritual realm, guess what? They have no reverence for it. They have no reverence for it. Then they wonder why their life is chaos. 
Well, tonight you are going to get one of the greatest, greatest teachings that Holy Spirit can bring about spiritual warfare. Can we give God praise right now? Oh, say when it gooder and gooder. It gets gooder and gooder because it's not going to come from me. It's always from Holy Spirit. But guess what? It's through our Elder Jim. Amen. Amen. So you guys welcome Elder Jim. <laughs> See, Elder Jim got me trained. I got to go get this real quick. For those of you who don't know, before we even got a building, before we even got a building, Holy Spirit told Trish and I to buy this. And, and, and hear my heart. Holy Spirit told us to buy this. And I I was like, why are we going to buy this? Hold on a minute. I'm still talking. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he said, I, I said, why are we going to buy this? And Trish was like, are you sure you want to buy that? I'm like, yes. And she goes, why do you want to buy that? I said, because Holy Spirit showed me that Elder Jim loves to preach with the stick man. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, Elder Jim has been teaching I Am Recovered at the Ark. Going almost, we're going almost a year now. Let's give God praise. Amen. And every time he concludes, I am recovered, he goes through spiritual warfare. So by the grace of God, I'm so grateful that he said yes, because I asked him just at the last, you guys know how we roll, last minute. I'm like, hey, bro, do you mind doing this? He's like, well, I guess so. <laughs> Holy Spirit says so. Let's do this, right? But I'm going to ask you not only um, to pray for our elder, our, all of our elders, but also just keep in mind what he's about to teach you. It's all Holy Spirit, but it's it's real. Yeah, amen. Yeah. amen. And, and hear my heart, guys, don't get weird in the spiritual realm. Listen, I've seen people try to act like they're all spiritual and they try to get involved in spirit and they get messed up. You know why? They're not ready. And I'm warning every one of you right now. If you have Jesus Christ as Lord, guess what? The victory is already yours. Amen. 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 The victory is already yours. Amen. You're covered by the blood. But what Elder Jim's about to teach you right here is truly how to take some things in order, how to repent, and how to, man, how to just start slicing and dicing. Can I get an amen? amen? I mean, listen, I want in the spiritual realm for God's Hand Worship Center to sound like a bowling alley. Y'all feel me? I want in the spiritual realm that we sound like a bowling alley because just demons' heads just keep on rolling. Amen? amen. Hey, again, amen? amen? So without further ado, listen, we're not going to put him on a time limit. We're not doing small groups tonight. We are going to be in this worship. Amen? amen. And um, I, I know how he rolls because it, it, you, you guys, I'm just, uh, hey, hey, man, I love you. <laughs> I love you. So no small group? No. Well, I, I, okay. Yeah, this is it. Hello, my name is Jim, and I am recovered by the Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, the Lord God. That's the first part of I am recovered. Even though spiritual warfare is a little different than I am recovered, it all fits hand in hand. And I started implementing this with uh, at the Ark here a while back because you know just to get a break in between. You know, you you go through twelve steps, which is six weeks. You know, instead of going back to back, you know, the Lord Holy Spirit just said, "Hey, you know, let's just uh, let's go over some spiritual warfare." So that's what we. That's what uh, you know, I had I had to do that. Because it gives a break, but you know the spiritual warfare. I'm not going to come in. I'm not going to come at this uh, all crazy and scary or anything. This is just you know I'm going to keep this thing simple because spiritual warfare is a simple thing. You know once once you kind of learn the dynamics about it. But uh, first we're going to do our Lord's prayer because that's part of I am recovered. We do it there. We we do it here. So we'll start off with that. You know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Spiritual warfare. I'm going to read a few things. You know, if I don't write this stuff down, I... I I'm at, I'm at work, you know, don't don't tell my boss, though, but, you know, I'm typing, and people come at that, and I said, what are you typing? I said, ah, don't worry. 
Because if I don't, if I don't, I'll be stuttering. You know, Pastor's good. He's wrote, he wrote, he runs smooth with this thing. For me, I got to write a few things down. But I got a back part here. I'll, I'll turn this over here in a second. But let me get it ready. Let's see. Got a back side here. Get my marker. Let me see. I didn't know I was going any longer, Pastor. Let me get me a marker now, because you know me. Got to write stuff down. Who's who's seen Stick Man? Anybody? Yeah, There've been a few. So Ark Brothers back there. Ark Brothers have for sure. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I tell you, when uh, when God put me and Pastor together, I tell you, it's just a. Uh, it's just an unreal moment for me. And like you said about praying for people in, out there, isn't it getting so much easier, you know, for us all, Craig and everybody, to be able to do that because of what we're doing, yes. right? Amen. It used to be kind of scary when you, I, I've done it myself, you know, you go out there and see somebody out there, you know, I'm not feeling, well, I'll, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you, right? But since we've been out there in Isaiah House, it's, it'd be hard to do that. It'd feel weird, wouldn't it, to say, "Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll pray for you." You'd be like, you'd be like hey, man, let, me, on, brother. "Let me, let me, let me pray for you." I mean, that's just how we roll now. It's, it's, we're changing. Things are changing, and man, it's so good to see our brothers from the ark out here. Hallelujah! Because this is what the changes. This is what this is what's happening here, because of what's happening Amen. by letting the Holy Spirit run the show. Amen. And, Praise God. Praise God. So we'll go over this before I flip up this thing here. But I'm going to be talking a lot about, you know, Ephesians 6. You know, that's just a good book. Paul Paul put that out. Man, he was he was writing this letter to the church of Ephesus, you know, back in the day. You know, and, he, and he's giving final instructions, preparing his church for a mighty battle. All right? Paul's letting his church know that the Christians are in battle. And they need basic tools a soldier would carry. Just as no soldier would go into battle without his armor, no Christian should go through life without their spiritual armor. We got some military people in here, right, beside me? You know, we got to train for that stuff. You got to train with equipment. You got to have all this stuff on your belt and your and your gun and your rucksack and all that stuff. You know, you got to train and prepare for it. You know, that's what a soldier does. Ephesians 6.12 emphasizes the danger of, of the battle we are in and the importance of the tools we have. We will see the importance of these and the reasons why we should put this armor of God on. For, and this is the big thing right here in Ephesians that really stand out. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's a key thing right there that we all have to just put in our heads strong. We wrestle not against flesh and blood it's not flesh and blood that we're dealing with with what's happening around us it's easy to focus on the troubles we're facing if you look at the news and all the people against us family and stuff it's it's hard not to focus on that stuff especially with what's going on now ephesians six twelve says paul is trying he's trying to open our eyes here in this in this uh in this book and to challenge us to look beyond what's right in front of us When he, when he wrote this, we know we, we see urgency in, in these verses. You know, he's trying to get a message together. You know, it, it's important that we're in a battle. And he's just trying to tell these people, hey, we're in a battle, folks. Amen. And it's not, it's, it's not the battle many Christians here or anywhere in most of your churches think it is. And this battle that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, it's not, a, it's not a, against the things that we see. It's a spiritual battle. Our enemy isn't people. It's sin. And that's not to say that there aren't battles that are on physical levels, because they are. But when we face physical temptations, because it can get physical, you know, when you sin, it can get physical, because if you're doing things wrong, it gets physical. we got to say no. you got to start learning to say no. That's a that can go physical. But for, for the primary, the primary focus on what I'm going to go over is that we face an enemy that we don't see, right? That's who we're that's what we're going to focus on. And you you choose to follow God and resist the devil. And you find yourself in battle. 
Paul is pleading, pleading with his readers to be aware of this fight and to prepare for it. Paul goes over some of these enemies that we fight against, and that's where I'm going to flip this over. Remember, it's not what we don't see. It's what we, you know, see if this is flipped right. Yeah. Spiritual warfare. Here we go. Ephesians 6.12. Principalities. You know. Remember, it's what we don't see. It's against the principalities, rulers, against authorities, against spiritual hosts of wickedness. So you see, this is how I've laid it out with the rankings. You know, how God kind of showed me, and I, I go over this at the ark and stuff, you know, with how, how they... Because it is military. You've got God on one side and you've got Satan on the other side. It's a huge battle going on right here. And this is his ranking right here. So you even got your archangels. You know, your Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel. And there's a whole lot more angels and stuff. It's your, like your generals in the military. you got Satan also too, who used to be part of this group right here. But when he rebelled, he made his own, he, he, he started his own little military group. And he's got, you know, the, the one that came to, to mind, I, you know, I don't have all the names like this. There are names, but like Beelzebub is a name, you know, when you hear that in the scripture, you see that in the Bible. That would be somebody that would probably be way up there ranking because it is principalities and powers that we're dealing with. You know, there's a lot of forms to when you get into spiritual warfare with your demonic and demons, you know, you got your low levels, medium levels, and you got your high ranking levels, you know, up in here that's really going to cause some havoc, but guess what? They've got, they're not worried so much about you all, these guys. It's all these other ones, and this keeps trickling down, just like military. you got this, you've got your, your general, and then your captains, and your lieutenants, and, and it goes down to your sergeants, and to your, to, your, to your privates, and your corporals. It goes way down, and this thing's full, full, because one-third of the angels came along with him. We don't know how many it is. It could be millions and thousands. It could be billions. And they're over here fighting against us. It's a, it's it's a war. It's 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 war, and and it can get physical. So when they do this, you all when you all get into spiritual warfare, or when you all become Christians, and you all accept God into your heart, you start that, that battle starts right there. And the battles are all happening around us. Even when we can't see them, we can definitely see the effects of war. There are still a lot of Christians who are armed for the wrong battle. And I'll tell you why. Against uh, Because they're, they're worrying about culture, things that are going on in the cultures or politics, you know, and, and, and they're, they're kind of focusing on that stuff. And that's not what the Bible teaches. You know, we wrestle, remember, against, not against flesh and blood. So it's not all that other physical stuff that you see with politics and what's going on around us. We have to keep our focus on what's really happening here. Amen. It's something we don't see. And you can clearly get sidetracked by focusing on worldly events. You know, that's why, you know, most of us, you'll hear us, we don't even watch the news anymore. Because you can get sidetracked. You can get distracted. You can get distracted from your family and friends. You know, because... The ones that come against you that hurts the most is your family, right? And the devil, he'll throw everything at you, and that's what he's going to do. So don't let your guard down. That's a, that's a for sure thing, even as a military. Even in, in the military, they'll tell you, stay vigilant. Keep your eyes open. Stay on guard. Nothing, nothing any different for, for us as Christians, because this is, this is a war. And it's very, very, very real. And so we just got to put our armor on. Man, I was going to make it short, but now I'm, I'm going. It's Holy Spirit now. <laughs> so we got to put this armor on. It's so important. We'll, we'll, re, we'll have somebody read this here in a minute, but we'll get back to some of this principality stuff. As soon as you uh, become a Christian, say like, I'll just point somebody out. Who, who we got? Chad. Uh, we got brother Pastor Jr. back there. When Pastor Jr. back there, you know, we'll, we'll draw him a little stick man down here. We got to draw a stick man, right? Oh, man. Sorry, I don't, I don't. Let me see. That don't look right. That don't look. All right. 
So when, 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 he, when he became a Christian, you know, because when he got to the ark, when you first got to the ark, Pastor, was you, was you ready to go like Christian or was you kind of crunchy a little bit? All right. But when he said, hey, God, you know, I, I'm done. I, I'm giving this to you, Father. I'm giving this to you. Well, guess what? That's when this stuff kicks in. And I tell the guys out there the same way, you know, you're not going to hear too much from these guys because that's way up there. This is like, you know, and, and the Bible's not going to, this isn't going to be real if the Bible didn't have it in there. But the Bible mentions this, not just in Ephesians. It's so many places he talks about principalities and powers, rulers against the authorities. And when I did a lot of more other study, you know, when you hear about the Nephilim and stuff like that, and back when, when uh, you had giants. And I believe some of these powers and principalities were some of, back in the day, were these giants, you know, because you got the Prince of Persia and, and all those princes that they, that they named that were powerful beings. You know, even though they're from God, and at one time, you know, just like when God created Lucifer, he created him, you know, to worship him. Just like he created all those other princes, you know, and principalities. He's created it all. He's the creator. Amen. But when they uh, rebel against him, and even back in the day when you had the Prince of Persia and all that stuff, you'll read like in Deuteronomy and stuff, you'll see a lot of that in there where it talks about where they tried to come against him. And God said, hey, you know, enough's enough now. It's enough. It's, what you all are doing is crazy. So he had to like stop all that. And once they're gone... They're in the spiritual realm now. They're not physical. It's spiritual. But they're up in here. They're still leading their people and their military. So when Pastor JR became a Christian, they get on the radio and they're dispatching already. You know, we got a new one here. We don't want to lose him. Let's send him. So now you got all these little demons coming down here to watch him. So now 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 he's now he's got all this around him now because they're dispatching towards him. He's got demons all around him now because he, that's why, you know, most of these, not just the guys at the ark, just anybody out there in that world, you don't realize what's going on around you because you don't see it. People want to see it. They want to see it to believe it. This is something you can't, you just got to believe it. You got to have that faith. Remember, faith is something you don't see, but you believe it. You know, but so when he dispatches this, you know, he's like, we, we got we to gotta call it all on there because. You know, I don't I don't know if he can see I don't think he can really see the future, but he knows that if we don't get this guy here, he might be in this army. So we got we got to dispatch this quick and get this put out. But guess what? Pastor Jr. is working on this because he's going through. I, I am recovered. Right. And he's learning all this stuff with identity and stuff. So as he's learning this identity and stuff, he starts removing some of this stuff. You know, he's like. I need you out of my life because that's the demon of anger and demon of, you know, depression and fear. So he starts knocking this stuff off, you know, anxiety, unforgiveness, and he starts knocking these off. So now it's not getting so bad, right? Because he's dealing with it. But guess what? He's still he's still going to send it, and, he, and, and he's going to do that with all of us. That's why when we say we pray hedge around us, protection, because he's not going to stop. He's not going to stop. Until we're done. But we can be protected because it is a warfare. And this is one way we'll protect ourselves is by this armor. We have to have this armor on daily. It's so important, you know, to armor up. And you know, a lot of people just take this stuff just lightly. You know, they're just going to take it right. lightly. Today's lesson. Right. Today's lesson. And they just move on to the next Sunday service without thinking of how real this thing really is and how... Behind the scenes, like Pastor said, you know, and I preached this one service about spiritual goggles. You know, it'd be nice to be able to have a pair of spiritual goggles uh, that you could just put on. And you'd be like, you know, like in that movie with uh, that old wrestler, when he, it's called They, They they Live or something. He put them goggles on, see those aliens, remember? Some of you all see it's like an 80s movie, a 70s. And he'd see these aliens, he'd put these goggles on and see the aliens around, see? And if we had some spiritual goggles, like Pastor said, we could put these on and we'd see all our angels around us. Hallelujah. We'd see them. But we'd also see the enemy. We'd also see that. And when you've seen that, that will change you. So you're not going to be like, oh, you know, like he said. 
you're not gonna Come be on, you're not gonna be like that. You know, you're not gonna say, uh uh-huh. yep. Now you might be a little intimidated, you're gonna be a little fearful now because when you see him, because they're gonna look much bigger than where you're at. Because if you're not in the right place, these little things that are way down here, yeah. what do I so the art guys, what do I call them things? What do I call them things? Remember? Huh? Detachments, leeches, right? Leeches. And I, I don't draw a real good leech, but I think that's what a leech looks like. They got little things they attach themselves to you, right? It's got, got little tails to them, little, little suckers. Well, here's what's happening. He's dispatching these little, these little demonics right here. And he's going to try to attach these things to you. Now, if we've seen them, you'd be looking at it. You'd be like, you know, if you're, if you're afraid of mice or bugs, certain bugs, spiders, you know, you got a fear for that stuff. And when you see them, you get out of there, right? And so if you just did like this and you're like, oh, wait, wait, what's on me? I mean, imagine what that would be like, right? You know, imagine if you did something wrong, you opened up a door. Now you're going to let one of these things attach itself to you. Now, spiritual warfare from what I, you know, the years I've been doing it, uh, it's hard to, when you talk about possession, because when they say spiritual warfare, you know, there's going to be demonic possession and levitations and all this stuff. That's, that's, it's real. It's real. But this is also real. So these attachments happen. So when you open up a door, even as a Christian, you know, you're not, it's very, very seldom you're ever, you're ever going to see a true possession. True possession is when you just give all faculties, not people sitting in here. You wouldn't even, if you was going to be truly possessed, you wouldn't even be sitting in here. You'd be at home. You'd, you would, wouldn't be eating. You would just, you'd quit drinking. The devil would be inside of you. You gave yourself to them either with a blood sacrifice or something you've done, some ritual that you've done, and you've given it to them. And you've, you said, here, basically, here, Satan, take me and just, I'm yours. And then he's going to take you. And he could cause, that's when, that's when, remember I talked about physical, it doesn't get physical, but it does, does get physical. Because if you get to that point, you're, you're going to be gone, your life will be gone. So we don't have to deal with that stuff. But we do have to deal with these attachments still. When we sin, we open up that door to these attachments. You could pray hedges around you, but if you sin, you sin. If you go home and you get on your phone, and you're looking at something you're not supposed to. We just opened up a door, right? Amen. Amen. And guess what? Now that demon of pornography, it just came out. And he might not got sucked in there deep, you know. He might just, you know, there's a little flick because you just, you look at one time and you quit. But when you're looking longer than you're supposed to, now you're like, uh-oh. Now he's getting in. Because you know how leeches are. You ever Anybody ever had a leech on them? I have. You let them on there first. If you if you remove them quick, it's quick, right? But if you're in the water in the lakes and you come out there, and sometimes you got to really work on getting that thing out. It's in there good. You got like, oh no, man, it leaves a mark and everything. So if you're looking at stuff you're not supposed to too long, it's going to leave a mark, and you and, and now it's on you. And that's why even the, you're still coming to church and you're still praying and you're still doing this. You're listening to music. You're still going through the week and it's still great. But then a few days later, you're still back on the phone again. Because guess what? You didn't take care of this problem right here. You didn't take care of this problem. And get, now guess what? Now you now you, you got a family member who's really done you wrong. And you got a little bit of unforgiveness in your life here right now. Because you're not forgiving that person like you're supposed to, right? So now you got another one coming in here. Now you got this one already on you for porn. Now you got this one coming in for unforgiveness. Now what else have we not done? What else are we opening up doors for? And then we got another one coming in here. Now you got two or three of them around. You're not talking about chains. But, uh, you know, there's your chains right there. Now you're walking around, and these things, as they suck the life out of you, they get bigger. And that's why when they talk about these chains, you're walking around like this pretty soon. You're like this, and you're just trying to wonder why. What's happening? Why is it so easy for me to go back to this crap every time, time after time? Why do I keep going back to this? Because you haven't taken care of this. Amen. And if you had these on, you'd see it. You'd be like, hey, get off of me. Amen. It'd be so easy if you could do that, right? But we can't. So it's easy to say, oh, it's okay. You know, oh, nobody's looking. You know, ooh, yeah, nobody's looking. It's easy. 
But if we could see, and what if we could see others with those leeches on and be like, oh, brother, man, you got, man, let me pray for you. You got some leeches on you, brother. You got some on there sucking the life out of you. That's what these guys do. That's their job. Their job when they, their job is to spend eternity after us. That's their job. They have nothing else to do. Because you know why? He's jealous. Because guess what? He, he's not going to get to see the kingdom. All these rank, high ranking, I don't care how high ranking they are, they're all jealous. And they're under us. So as these go down, and, and I'm telling you, as you start putting this armor on, especially here, I, I tell you, I've never felt more armored up and, and I, I've really been pretty strong in church since 2011. But in this last year, I tell you, it's cha- my everything's changed about me. Everything, 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 everything. So I, I'm, I'm just telling you. So these things right here don't look so big anymore, and these things are easier to take care of. Amen. And we should all be thinking about that. Thinking, if I open up a door. I just didn't do something wrong. I may have I may have just caused an attachment to happen yep. to take place. Because I let that sin in, I open up that door. Yep. So always remember when we open up a door, what we could be letting in. Amen. Always keep that, you know, always keep that in mind. That we just gotta keep that door closed. And there are people probably, I'm sure, right now today has come in here tonight. You know, and they, they, they're carrying a few of these. They don't really know it because they may not think it's a problem right now. Amen. Something they, that, something, you, something you're doing that we know you're not supposed to be doing, right? Amen. Amen. But you continue because it's easy. And guess what? You know, you're just not thinking of it like this. I, you know, it's hard for me not to think like this, being in spiritual warfare for a while. You know, it's kind of helped me along in the years, but I, I still slipped up some and I knew. That I had to take care of it still. But I tell you, the closer you get to God, the closer you get to Him, and the the more you just wake up and you put this armor on every day, it, it man, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. And I tell you, this, so in spiritual warfare, yeah, I've seen a lot of stuff. I've seen some crazy things in it. I've done a lot of things that was fun, and back in the day, I've been on television a couple times and some other stuff when I was in the paranormal stuff, you know, and and that just uh, that was just the door opener for me, and I didn't want to open those doors. I had to close all that stuff because I knew God had something else for me. Because when I was in the paranormal area and doing all that stuff, I, I worked hundreds of cases with families and stuff, setting up equipment day after weekend after weekend. I've been all over the place. And I never was getting fulfilled with that. And I thought something's not right here. And that's when God was saying it's not right because you're going in and telling these people, yeah, you got something going on in here, but you're not taking care of the problem. Amen. So God, in 2012, that's when he said, hey, you're going to go in a whole different direction in here. And it's going to be spiritual warfare ministries because you got to go in there and start helping these families deal with it. Amen. Deal with it. Amen. So when I go in, it's been a while now because if you're not right-minded, don't get involved in spiritual warfare because just becoming a Christian, just becoming a believer is tough enough already. When you become a pastor or somebody, a, a spiritual warfare minister or a divorce care minister, when you start ministering at the Isaiah, you, you put more targets on your back. You know, you're going to, you, you got to be, you know, you got to be armored up and ready. If you start getting in, involved in more stuff, you got to stay, you really got to stay armored up, I'm telling you, because of this right here. Because if the more you get yourself involved, send the cavalry. A man is on, on, on a roll, send the cavalry. And that's what they're going to, you know. Now she's, she's, she's prayed up, she's ready to go, she's going to go into battle, and she's going to go against these things, and she's going to start getting them out of her life, you know, and she's going to start knocking these things down. And eventually they'll, they'll start getting tired. Eventually they're going to be like, all right, we've been on this. It's like beating a dead horse. We need to just pull out. We need to, we need to pull out and retreat. We got to retreat because it's not working. It's not working because 
They prayed up too much. Every time I get around them, every time our army gets around them, man, that's all we're hearing about God. And we just can't take it anymore. You know, they can't take it. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear you messing up. They want to see you on your phone. They want to see you talking to your neighbor wrong. They want to see you, you know, talking to a family and not forgiving them. That's what they want. They want you not to forgive somebody who's done something really wrong against you. That's what their goal is. They don't care about all the other stuff. They want to look at how to get in to your life. So just always be aware that they're, that they're trying. They're out that door waiting, and they're, they're waiting and watching our every move. That's all they have time for. If I was retired and had time to just do ministry, I'd be in full-time ministry. They're in full-time what they do. Full-time. While we're sleeping, they're, they're watching. And they're waiting. That's the thing. They're waiting. They're just waiting for you to slip up. And if you don't take care of it quick, they're going to latch in. And the longer you don't take care of it, the harder it's going to be to get those things off. Remember, you got to start digging. You might have to get your little knife out and kind of scrape it or pull or whatever. So it's not going to be an easy fight, guys. But it is a battle. Somebody wants to read... You got your scripture with you? Somebody got a Bible and read Ephesians 13 through 18? So I just want to hear this out. It's, it's a good, it's a good. Anybody? Anybody else? Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand firm. Is it going? Read it. Oh, that's it. Sorry. Uh, stand therefore having fastened, fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes of your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, in all circumstances take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And, the, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication that to that and keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Every day. Every day. If you miss something, you're going to be missing a part of your armor. So if you don't want to put this your, your, your shoes on and your belt, especially your belt. If I don't have my belt on, my pants fall down, right? Sometimes you've got to wear that belt. So if you don't have this whole, you know, if you say, I want to, I'll, I'll put my boots on my belt, but I'm not going to wear the helmet today. Well, you're just going to open up your mind for the enemy to come in. You know, I'm not going to take my sword with me. You know, it's all important. It's all important. And having that shield around you. I tell you what, Pastor JR's never. I tell you what, when he when he showed me the shield, how this thing works, I, it, it floored me. Who who's who's some big guys we got here? Give me some big. Give me a line of big guys right here. About, give me about six big guys right here in front of me, right here. See these big guys right here? Now let me get now. Come on. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute, Austin. Wait wait a minute. I'm gonna show you something though. See, wait a minute. See all you big guys? Now let's get the little guy up here. There we go. There we go. Now but now you stand in the front this time though, Pastor. Stand in the front though. For, stand in the front. I want them to see this. What's that? Now, when you're praying, and you got your angels, and you're praying for your, your, your army of angels to, to put the hedge around you, look at some of your angels. Amen. Now, they've, now they've, got their, they've got their shield right there. Pastor, explain the shield like you showed me that day. It's like a tongue and groove pattern. Anybody put in the hardwood floor? You know what I'm talking about? Spiritual formation is a straight line, right? So, if you got your shield out here, come on, you can put your shield up. Right, and you got yours in a straight line, and they unite. Right, look here. See here. 
So then, if you're protecting another Christian, then how's anything gonna penetrate you? Right? Amen. It's like a phalanx pattern, like in the in the what a, the gladiator. You ever seen that movie? Yeah, nothing can penetrate that. So then, if they got the sword out, see that's the sword actually in the Roman military was six to eight inches long with pinpoint accuracy, right? So think about our Bibles today, right? There, and it's so that they could pierce any you know spot in the armor that they could get in battle. And but you would link up just like this, in that way you were impenetrable. So if you link up together like this, there's nothing can stop you. Amen. You know what I mean? <laughs> in the name of Jesus. But what I was gonna say while I go I had my hand up, bro. I, was I thought you were just praying. No, I, I was that too. I was that too. But where uh, he was saying that, you know, we start getting all this crud off of us. If it wasn't for guys like this and this and uh, and all these guys, man, I wouldn't have had a chance, right? They poured into me. They blessed my heart. Okay, this program is full of love. That's what unites us all, right? And that's what draws me to this program. Pastor Joey, all you guys, man. And so we have a united force, Amen. united in love. So therefore, everything we do is out of love for one another. Amen. 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 So, so yeah, y'all can got to do, do an armor check on these guys every day, like Jalen, Adam, all these guys. They're part of the team, too. They're part of the crew. You got to go through every now and then because I can tell when Chad's in a bad mood or if he ain't got his helmet on or if he ain't got his belt tightened up. Maybe we just got to have him shoot the feet. But I'm going to tell you about the armor, though, real quick, and I don't I don't want to take away from you. Okay? <laughs> but the, the shield of faith, who we have faith in, that's Jesus Christ, right? Amen. That's linked up. So he's out front, right? The helmet in the Roman military had a brass plum on top, right? To signify who they belong to, okay? So think about this. So Paul's describing this armor as he sees it in his day, but however, what do we yield? The cross, right? Amen. So if it got knocked off, it'd be easily picked back up. Even if it was your buddy on the battlefield, you could pick it up and put it back on it, right? Amen. Another thing, the breastplate. And the belt, of course, he touched on the belt. The belt, the truth. Who's the way, the truth, and the life? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. The belt held all the other pieces together, right? Amen. Okay? So without that, nothing else will stay together, right? Also, in the Roman military, everything was ready at the hill. The belt held the soldier's ration, right? The belt held his coin purse. The belt held every single thing that he needed. Don't Jesus supply everything Amen. you need? Amen. Amen. It's a, it's a piece of bread. That's getting me goosebumps. God bumps. Uh, Donna left out here last night, last week with God bumps on his forehead. You know what I mean? <laughs> man, I love this place, man. It's my home. But so, so it held everything, right? Jesus holds everything we need. Now the breastplate, his is not going to fit me. And mine's not going to fit him, right? But however, I need his help to put mine on. And he needs my help to put his own, right? Yeah. So, and the belt holds everything together. Now, the shoes of peace. You think of shoes as, you know, like in the military or in, or just regular shoes like this, right? But in the military, in the Roman military, they had spikes on them, right? And it says to what? Stand firm, right? So, so if you had spikes on your shoes, they had spikes on the back where they would dig down. So they're not engaging. Right? Because victory is already ours. Correct? Amen. Amen. So it's it's never we're fighting from victory is what we're doing, not fighting for. It. You see, that's a whole game change, right? So we're just to greet people out of love. Now, if the battle hits us, we have our swords that we can pinpoint accuracy Amen. right off the bat. If you if we're all working together, you can't penetrate that, man. And so the helmet of salvation. Y'all know a little more about that? The breastplate of righteousness. Who's righteousness? Jesus. God's righteousness, right? And and that's that's what we got to always remember. But the helmet, too, I want to go back to that real quick, is on days where you forget who you belong to, that's that means you, you haven't put your helmet on, right? 
So you mm-hmm. got to tell yourself, I am a child of the Most High. Amen. I am a beloved of God. Amen. 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 And, and I tell you, the most vital part of the armor, which it's actually at the end of the, the verses that uh, Chad read out of the Bible, is pray in all occasions, right? Pray at all times, right? Keeping alert. So constant contact yes. with our maker, right? Constant contact with our Savior, with the Spirit, right? So prayer activates the arm. Amen. 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 I love you guys. <laughs> That's Pastor JR right there. I tell you, every Monday, probably for the best, uh, I don't know, four or five months, it's like every Monday he gives up and gives a word. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit said, hey, we got to feed into this guy. We got to let this guy do his thing. Because like I said, you know, six, seven, eight months ago, he came in there. He was, he didn't know what was going to happen. He did He had no clue that this was going to happen. That he'd be up preaching Amen. every Monday night. But he gets up about 10, 15 minutes every Monday night. He's been preaching for months now. Yeah. And the guys love him. I'm telling you, because he's going to get out there and he's going to be preaching in church one day. He's going to be evangelizing. Because yeah. it, ain't, it ain't about me. It's about making disciples. That's part of I Am Recovered. Remember at the end, exchange complete, disciple. And for us to become effective disciples, we got to learn to disciple others. And then they're going to disciple. And we, we feed into these brothers out there, I'll tell you. He's out there. They're out, all these brothers out there, Ark, that come here are going back and they're going through this daily. Right? And intake, intake, spiritual warfare, ground zero right there from day one. But you've got brothers right here on the front line out there right now that's dispatching to help those brothers coming in out there. And if we could just get them in up there, you know, to, to our, our Monday nights. Helps out a lot too, because we we just want to feed it. We we just want to show them love. But spiritual warfare. I hope you guys got a little bit of into this a little bit. The the armor thing. That's just amazing, because you know, if you had that in front of you, and, and especially if we're armored up together as brothers and sisters in Christ right here, and we armor up and stay linked together, like we like, and I think that's what's happening. We're we're linking together so close as a family. That we we check each other's armor, you know. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Craig, let me check your armor. How you looking? You know, Chad. You know, yeah. David. Right. David. You know, CM. Let me see, Darren. Let me check it. Make sure your armor's on good. You know. Oh, wait a minute. Let me lay some boots up for you. Yeah. We're here to help each other, yeah. and, there, and there's nothing been any more amazing than going through this journey with you guys here, with this new covenant Amen. movement, Amen. Holy Amen. Spirit movement, yeah. like no other. Like no other, like no other, and it's only going to keep getting what and gooder. So that's it, guys. I mean, I don't know what else to say, but like I said with Pastor Jr., we're just like you know every week. I I, I can see our guy sitting back. We all just love this guy when he gets up and preaches, man. I, not that I don't want to hear my pastor, but if he's preaching at a church somewhere, I might sneak out and go listen to him one time. <laughs> Cause he, he 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 lives that word. He lives it every day. He's living in that word, just like we all should be. But just just keep in mind of what's going on. That we're not just seeing physical things. It's spiritual. Remember, Amen. we're seeing it's it's the things we don't see that we got to worry about. That's right. And put them goggles on every once in a while if we could. You know, pray for that. Just to you know, God gives discernment, right? Some of us have that gift of discernment. So you know, He's giving you that set of goggles and you know when you're around something bad you know you know so you see but remember now here with the attachments that's the important thing i want to leave you with just just that that when you open up that door you're, you're, you're opening up room for this to come in and we and, and that's the stuff you know it, it might be something rooted deep that you've been doing for a long time and it's some some of that some of that stuff's hard to break like with addiction, you know, with alcohol or drugs, even it might be a hard thing, and you know that that leads you. So, you know, it's yeah. you can't hardly move, and you'd be like that. Yeah. So you know, you eventually got to get that thing off of you. Got to get it off of you, and just keep it prayed off. And when you see you mess up again, you got to pray harder. Got to pray harder and pray harder. 
and then pretty soon you'll you'll start knowing when that thing's coming up on you because you're going to know the signs of what usually what you'd be doing to get you into what you're not supposed to be doing and you're going to say uh oh spidey sense is going off back off in the name of jesus Amen. get behind me Amen. get behind me because we have a lot of authority we have so much authority god has given us so much authority that we start coming up here we're above all this stuff he gives us authority so you know when i first got into spiritual warfare you know i thought man the devil that's a big thing right there that's big he's big man he's big but he's not so big anymore. Amen. He's not so big anymore. On, this stuff's not big. And definitely these things aren't big. Some of these, you know, now I'll tell you what, there are some attachments that, you know, you got to pray just like anything. you you got to fast and pray yeah. to get some of these attachments off. They're, they're, they're rooted deep. And they're not going to go easy. They're not going to go easy. But the more you keep coming here, the more you keep feeding into the Word every Sunday and fellowshipping like we're doing. And the main thing is loving on everybody. Loving on everybody that walks through that door is breaking off so many shackles. Amen. So many shackles. So many shackles. I mean, I had, I had, I probably had that on me for a while. Just, to, you know, just that, that judgmental leech, right? A judgmental spirit. We all, wanna, we all want to play judge, right? So when we don't see somebody doing something to what they're supposed to be doing, we're quick to judge. Oh, wait a minute, you're doing this, you're doing that. You're living this, you're living that, and we're so quick to judge. But guess what? What you're doing? You're getting it. it the way we were doing. He's right on there. Yep. And then pretty soon you're walking with a limp. Yep. You open that door up. You got to, I'm telling you, there's no place for it here. Amen. No place. No place. No place. We're going to let whoever walks through that door just come through that door. I don't care what you're doing or what you did. You just come through that door. That's it. Just come through that door because we're going to love on you. Come on, Elder. And I tell you, just keep praying for the other pastors that go out and minister every weekend after weekend to the Isaiah house. That, that doors just keep opening up. Keep praying. Lift me up on Mondays. Mondays has been really hard, you know, at the post office. You know, it's time of the season. It gets rough, and I'm rushing. And so I try to get distracted. I don't have no leeches, but I do. He is still going to try to distract you. So he distracts me. So I'm trying to rush. I'm trying to get the, but I got things lined out. I got brothers that's going to be willing to take up a little bit of time for me till I get there. But Hallelujah. I tell you, I don't feel any better once I get in there. I don't care how bad of a day I've had when I get out there and I see my brothers there and I see those brothers out there. When I rate, when I, when I go like this, how many new guys we got out here in about six, seven, ten of raise your hand, man. Ooh, there ain't nothing like it. Nothing like it. I get pumped. I get pumped up. I get pumped up. Because, man, it's the battle's it's on. It's on. It's on. Because it's, it's a battle. When you go over there, you go to the Isaiah house, that's a battle zone right there. You got you got to wear this over there. Because it's on. It's a battle. So, I, I, I mean, I, we love you guys. Me and Sonia, I tell you, it's just... It's, 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 Pastor wants to get up and...